You can have a tremendous amount of fun shooting a 22 Magnum and have a very, very capable little round. Hello everyone and welcome back to AmmoMart.com where you can find real firepower online. I'd like to take a quick moment and thank everyone who showed such interest in our 22 Long Rifle series we did a couple of videos back. I completely enjoyed reading all of the comments and continue to be blown away by the knowledge base of a lot of our viewers. The reason I bring up that particular video is it kind of gave me the idea to cover the history of the 22 Magnum cartridge, which was often referenced in the previous comments. Now, 22 Magnum has a very interesting history, not near as long as the long rifle, but I think just as compelling. Let's go back to the year 1959. Dwight Eisenhower was president, and the only thing that fascinated Americans more than the space race was Magnum-powered cartridges, be it in rifle or handgun. Out of that, Winchester had already developed the Winchester Rimfire, or WRF, and around 1959, like I said, they developed what we, they became to be called the WMR, the 22 Winchester Magnum Rimfire which is what you see before you today. Unlike the 22 LR or its predecessor, the WRF, it had a longer case and a larger diameter. And unlike those other couple of bullets, it did not shoot a healed cartridge. It was more seated like a conventional round. Their obvious goal was to develop a more powerful and longer range varmint cartridge. And the rifle that Winchester had in mind to shoot it was the Model 61 Slide Action. I'm sure you've seen variants of it around gun stores or perhaps actually own one, but the trouble with the Slide Action was it didn't really adapt very well to the longer case length of the WMR. So, oddly enough, Marlin actually developed the first rifle to actually shoot this cartridge in something they called the Marlin Levermatic because it was easily more adaptable. What you get with the 22 Magnum cartridge is a much flatter and harder hitting round than the 22 LR at any distance. In fact, fired from a handgun that has a barrel length of more than four inches, the 22 Magnum is actually more powerful than 22 LR shot out of a rifle. I don't know whether Winchester was aware of it at the time, but they actually had invented the only popular rimfire cartridge invented in the 20th century, which isn't to say it was more popular than 22 LR, it wasn't. But as we covered earlier, the LR was actually invented in the previous century. It wasn't until 2002 when Hornady came up with the 17 HMR that they had another rimfire that was fantastically popular. One of the reasons why the 22 Magnum is so popular is because simply, you can put it in a lot of different platforms. And technically speaking, you can get projectiles that weigh between 30, 40, and 50 grains. They'll run out at about 1,500 to 2,000 feet a second. The lighter, faster bullets, this is, I think, quite interesting, actually develop 330 foot-pounds of energy, which is approaching nine millimeter power with considerably less recoil per discharge. So. It shoots well out of pistols, shoots well out of revolvers, and is a very, very good varmint cartridge out to 100 to maybe 150 yards with the right shooter. One of the downsides to the caliber, however, is this. There are a lot of people that complain if you're into harvesting squirrels and that sort of thing, that it is a little too much pop for any food you want to put in the pot. It has a tendency to damage the game to a point where you don't really get a lot of meat. However, we're gonna cover the power of this round later on as we talk about the everyday carry capacity and everyday carry capabilities of the 22 Magnum. I've shot this round a lot, mostly out of rifles, and I can tell you that it's a little bit of a sleeper. I don't think people realize exactly how much kinetic energy the bullet has at rest. One of the issues with it, however, is you get a lot of people that claim it's not terribly reliable especially in a semi-automatic pistol. <clears throat> when the Magnum first came out, all of the semi-autos had what we, they ported the barrels and they did a lot of special things with them, trying to overcome something called the Blish effect. Modern day people and modern day manufacturers of firearms have turned out that 
that's pr probably not necessary. They were trying to back then overcome something we know now as stiction. And stiction, simply put, is when you have extremely high pressures and metals of various types and unlike types, they have a tendency to have to be really, really, really friction based. That's an observation that Blish made watching naval guns work. It probably doesn't have any real application to firearms, at least as the way modern manufacturers understand it. I think that a 22 Magnum semi-automatic properly maintained will probably be as reliable as most other firearms, but I still don't recommend that sort of rimfire caliber for everyday carry, but more on that in the next video. Anyone interested in purchasing a 22 Magnum handgun or rifle right now has a lot of choices, and sometimes the choices are not clear-cut winners. I'll give you a good for instance. In my mind, there's a couple of very good semi-automatic 22 WMRs on the market. One of them is this pistol here, the Keltec PMR-30. This is, of course, a polymer frame gun. It's very lightweight. And one of its interesting aspects is it actually has 30 rounds of capacity, which is a lot of firepower. Another one that's very popular is the Rock Island XT. That's an all steel gun. It kind of looks a little bit like the Caltech, maybe that and mixed with a 1911. Those guns are quite heavy. I fired them. They're very accurate, and I was not disappointed. They do come at a little bit of a higher price point, of course, than the polymer frame guns, but that's also a solid choice. One of my favorites is the Ruger LCRX revolver. This is polymer framed, very lightweight, fairly accurate gun as far as the double action goes, very, ac very accurate in the single action mode, and I really like the durability of this weapon. This is a well-made handgun. Now, interestingly enough, Stanyard Manufacturing Company made something they call the Thunderstruck, which is an interesting looking little revolver, and I'm sure we'll put one on the screen for you can see, so you can see the picture if you're not familiar. That actually fires two 22 WMRs with one trigger pull. It has two barrels, the cylinder is machined as such, so it's actually gonna release two barrels, two, two rounds per trigger squeeze. Interesting little gun, I've never fired them, and don't really have a lot of use for that sort of thing, but they're really, really interesting for maybe for some buyers. Can also get the 22 Magnum in Derringer form. Of course, semi-automatic rifle, Savage makes them. Um, there's a lot of them out there, and interestingly enough, they continue to sell quite popularly, you know, more than one would expect, I think. One of my all-time favorite semi-automatic pistols was from AMT, which stood for Arcadia Machine and Tool. They, in the early 80s, developed something they called the 22 Auto Mag. That was one of the most loudly speaking handguns I'd ever fired. And the amount of fire coming out the end of that barrel you could light a cigar with. It was one ferocious sounding handgun. Unfortunately, I sold the one I had years and years ago, and I wish I had it back. What a handgun. The Argentine military actually had a 22 Magnum submachine gun called the EDDA. Some people call it a little NAR submachine gun. It was kind of a wonky looking thing, but quite interesting. And I hope you enjoy the photo. I, was, I thought it was a fascinating picture. You can have a tremendous amount of fun shooting a 22 Magnum and have a very, very capable little round, regardless of whether you're using handgun or long gun. I don't believe, however, that it's going to swell in popularity any more than it has. As time has ticked on from 1959, there's a lot of other just as good or perhaps even far superior rounds that are once again rimfire back to the 17 HMR. Interesting invention for the time, Winchester was trying to subscribe to the American demand for magnum caliber cartridges. It's a fabulous little round, and if you can pick one up, I highly recommend it. You won't be disappointed.